Well, that's a great question. Counter cyclical capital buffers have been around for a while. Spain introduced them even before the crisis, and they may have helped a bit in Spain uh, uh, to help them weather the storm of uh, um, the real estate market in Spain, which caused the banks a lot of losses there. They have been explored uh, post-crisis through the Basel process, and there's a standing recommendation that each jurisdiction consider them carefully. Uh, but I haven't seen much action in terms of um, the actual implementation of significant countercyclical capital buffers. They're on the books. It's possible to use them uh, in, ter in terms of regulation, but they haven't been used heavily by regulators. Um, I believe Eric Rosengren recently suggested uh, that this might be a time to do that. As you know, uh, he is the president of the Boston Fed and one of the leading, one of the thought leaders at the Fed on these kinds of issues. Um, uh, Countercyclical capital buffers, it, he's right, it would, this would be a good time to do that because uh, the economy is perking along quite well. Capital buffers are uh, certainly not under stress. It's, it's exactly when that's the case that you want to load up on capital so as to give you more space uh, to use that capital in a stressed market. So I'm a fan, um, but um, it remains to be seen how much they're actually going to get used. Uh, if you think about it the following way, um, when would you rather load capital? Uh, when capital is relatively cheap because you're in a boom? Or when capital is extremely expensive because you're in a stress period? Uh, bank shareholders de detest the idea that when a bank's actually running against uh, its solvency, required solvency levels, that it's forced to raise capital because that's exactly when the discounts on new issues are quite severe. And you, you often see discounts of 50 or even higher percentage, like Unicredit did one a couple of years ago, in which they took a terrible beating. Uh, much cheaper would be to raise capital when you don't really need to raise it so that you have excess around. But it's, it's generally in the interest of shareholders to run on thin capital anyway, uh, because they have that option to keep the upside and avoid the downside. And it's up to regulators to impose those regulations on them to protect the, the broader economy. It's a natural uh, separation of responsibilities. The shareholders are looking after their returns and the regulators are looking after the rest of us.